What's a move that every single pro golfer makes? Well, they shell out the club from the inside, tuck in that right elbow, then from there they open up their body with an iron, getting the shaft to lean in front and really just compress the heck out of it. Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. And once you get that move down, it's almost like the ball just has nowhere to go, but pretty straight with a nice little tight draw. Let's go ahead and give it a whirl here. There we go, hit that one fantastic. Again, nice straight shot, a little bit of draw from right to left. Not gonna do much better than that, 205 with a six iron. Well, there's a couple misconceptions that are causing players to you know, make this almost impossible. Let's talk about the right arm getting tucked in. Well, there's a couple things that are happening when the right arm doesn't get tucked. Number one, I could be standing up out of my posture, and when I stand up out of my posture, if I was to tuck that arm, there's no way for me to reach the golf ball. If I got this position here with the shaft leaning forward, this great pro impact position, if I stand up out of my posture, all of a sudden I'm a foot away from the golf ball. I would have to throw my right arm, there would be a gap between the side of my body and my right arm, release all that lag, get rid of the shaft lean to now being able to reach the ball. Well, there's one little trick you can do that helps with this. Think about your right shoulder. Look at the difference between when I stand up and throw my arms, my right shoulder is way back here and far away from the golf ball, versus my right shoulder getting closer to the golf ball and in front of the golf ball. Now, I don't want this to be a slide in front. I wanna keep my nose behind this golf ball, but I wanna feel like my right shoulder goes down and through that, almost like if I had a split hand hockey grip and I was gonna go ahead and set up this golf ball normal, grab a split hand grip and then come down there and make contact like this, put a little pressure into that golf shaft. You can see how much forward my right shoulder would be, how much closer to the ball it would be. Get that same feeling and then try to recreate that in a golf shot, you're gonna find it's a lot easier to get that shaft lean. Let's go ahead and give it a whirl here. There you go, another one to sit that one. Fantastic, nice little draw there again. And I just felt like I'm really getting on top of that golf ball. Now the second piece of that, I can't get on top of that golf ball if I don't shallow it out first. What I mean by that is, if I'm coming down steep a little bit over the top here, and I get this right shoulder driving down and through, that's gonna be that over the top karate chop, just bury that ball on the ground, chunks, thins, big slices, every bad shot that you can think of. So I need to do a little drill here to where I feel like I can get that club from the inside, get that elbow tucked, and then rotate on through. Here's the way that I like to feel that. Go ahead and just take the club with your right hand only. I find most players can swing easier just the right hand only. And take it to the top of the backswing. And if you're by a wall like this, think about tucking this elbow in and getting this club against the wall like that. So I'm basically what I'm doing is I'm turning this arm out this way. And that's about the end of the range of motion. For me, that's as far that way as I can go. So simply going to the top of the swing, letting my arm tuck in, my elbow tuck in, that club get behind me. And then from there, I'm doing that rotating with the shoulder, getting the shoulder coming in front. That gets rid of that over the top steep action. I get very shallow, then I can rotate all that I want to. Let's go ahead and try another one there again. I would do about five reps with my right arm only. Then I would add my left arm in there, my normal grip, and I try to recreate the same feeling. Elbow tucked, club against the wall, then I just rotate on through. So let's give that one a whirl here. There we go, another nice shot. Just left center that time instead of right center. And really consistent ball flight, really consistent curvature to that because when I get that elbow tucked and I get the club coming from the inside, all I have to do is rotate and the rest pretty much takes care of itself. Now the last piece of this is getting the bow of the left wrist. You see the problem is when I get this club from the inside and I rotate, the face is wide open. I need to bow this left wrist to square it up. You see, the bowing of the left wrist not only opens and closes the club face, but it also adds and de-lofts the club face too. Here's what I mean by this. If I set this club shaft straight up and down, again, the pros are leaning the shaft forward. They're getting that compressing shot like we did with the, the hockey drill there. They're having the hands in front of the golf ball at contact. Well, if I leave this shaft straight up and down and I just bow my left wrist, that closes the club face. So that would be this motion here. I'm gonna be bowing it, would be closing it. I'll do it this way so you can see it. 
I'm going to cup it and that would open it. So you can see that face just twisting both ways when I do that motion. If I do that on the ground, here's the bow. And now you say, well, that's not going to work. The club face is pointing 30 degrees to the left. Well, watch what happens when I, lean, I keep the same wrist angle and I lean the shaft forward. Now all of a sudden the club face is square, the shaft is in front. I'll do the opposite. I'll cup my left wrist, face is wide open. What do I have to do to square it up now? I have to have the, shaft, the hands behind the golf ball. So if you pretend to stand up, throw the right arm, and have the shaft leaning back, there's no bow in that left wrist. So I wanna practice here getting this good drill, and I'm gonna have this wrist bow to square up that club face, that way I can get that draw. So again, same drill behind me, rotate on through, and now I'm just gonna bow the wrist to square that face up and have it perfectly square. If anything, I wanna go ahead and overdraw it as I'm doing that. So I'll get a little extra draw on this one maybe. There we go, start to the right. Definitely slinging back. And if I do that motion, I get that wrist angle like that, I'm guaranteeing that you can see these, these black lines, these tracers on there. I'm getting each one of those to turn over from right to left. I can really depend on that kind of a shot. Now there's one problem that we still have here. Most players aren't very good at filling this left wrist bow. What we really need is a drill to teach us to square up that club face in a way that we can feel with that right wrist or somewhere in the back swing to where it's much easier to see if I'm doing this correctly. I have a great video for you called the tennis racket drill. I'm gonna play a preview of that here in a second and I'm gonna walk you through step by step exactly how to feel that, that squaring up of the face the same way that the pros are doing it so that you get that right to left draw. I'll play a preview just in a second. All you need to do is go ahead and click, click excuse me, click on one of the cards that are popping up on your screen. If you don't see one of those I cards, go down to the description below, click the link there, and you'll get instant access. I can't wait to share with you this tennis racket drill, and man, it's gonna tie it together. Right elbow in, shallow from the inside, and then you just won't be able to help but hit that nice draw. Let's go and get started. Good player problems. We're gonna talk about shallowing that club shaft out as we're starting down as we're doing this rotating of the face that we worked, about, worked on in the last video. As we start this downswing, what you'll see with, with basically all uh, of the, the top players is instead of coming kind of over the top and letting the hands come out away from their body, letting the club come out away from their body, again, coming down steep into the ball and then having to open up, kind of fillet open the face and add loft to it, the flattening of the shaft should happen as soon as we start down. So as we start this downswing, what we want to have happening here you can imagine that if I draw a line from the hosel of my club up through my right elbow, that's my swing plane line, my elbow plane. As I go to the top of the swing, I'm gonna be slightly above that. And then as I start down, I want my hands to start to shallow out. I want the club to shallow out inside of this elbow plane. And at the same time,